Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for August 28th, 2019. Hey guys, I apologize I, if you can probably hear it in my voice. I have a little bit of a cold that I'm dealing with trying to fight that off. I mean, who gets a cold in the middle or toward the end of August except me? My goodness, I guess I've just been running myself a little bit ragged here lately. But I want to thank everyone um, that was at the e-learning session last night. We had a really good e-learning session, and that video will be posted hopefully later on today. If not, um, watch for it on the YouTube channel uh, in the next couple of days. It will be there. So let's take a look at what's going on in the market today. My goodness, you know, it seems like there's a point in the market. I wrote this in the morning blog, which by the way, if you look right under the, the title, um, down by the description of the video, right underneath there, there will be a link that you can click on and go right over to the blog if you want to learn more on the website. But it seems like that we reach a point in a sell-off where all of a sudden you can't buy a good story. Everything seems to be conspiring against us here. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's just one thing after another. So first off, last night, um, we had bond the 30-year bond year yield hit a new record low as that yield curve continues to invert. We have a situation that just cropped up this morning where the Prime Minister of uh, Britain uh, will be suspending, is moving at least, to suspend Parliament, which raises a, a tremendous risk of a no-deal Brexit situation. And that is causing the sterling to fall this morning, creating some um, currency fluctuations, adding to market pressures, um, overall. So there's a little bit of a concern going on over there. It even seems like the weather is trying to conspire against us with a tropical storm heading in on Puerto Rico that has already been uh, ravaged by, by storms. Uh, there are homes and buildings down there that are still using tarps for roofs and, and they have another tropical storm, a very strong top tropical storm headed directly for them. So just one thing after another. Then let's add some insult to injury, where we have um, our president suggesting that China wants to get back together and discuss, uh, negotiate a trade deal. Yet China has yet to confirm, since his talk about that, has yet to confirm any kind of negotiation being um, re-engaged. So, here we have a real difficult situation in the market for the market to deal with. Overnight, Dow futures um, were held a positive, um, had a positive look in them basically all night. Now that has quickly shifted to a, uh, a possibly negative open. Now we still have a lot of earnings and things like that coming out this morning that could change this yet. But now we're looking at that negative open and a follow through to this bearish engulfing candle. Technically speaking, that's not a good situation. We don't, you know, if we follow through with the bearish engulfing candle, that would suggest a retest of lows. We could test this low. We could even come down, test this low, or uh, dare I say it, even go lower in the market. There is a lot of uncertainty here. There's a lot of concern overall, and that's spreading you know, around the world, really, um, with what's going on here. So we're going to have to watch this pretty darn closely today. Um, we could get um, that, you know, that possible selling coming in. It's also possible we end up with just a very light choppy day with the market just getting weary of this and uh, the uncertainty um, just putting us into more of a choppy consolidation as we wait for some clarity. Who knows um, what happens. Right now, if we begin to rally, if we do begin to rally, we want to watch these resistance levels in the chart. Remember, our 50-day moving average is starting to flatten out and roll over. Our shorter term averages have crossed down. We have tremendous price resistance in the chart above. So that 
that could be a little bit of a problem. Now let's take a look at the spy and here's one of my major concerns. It's been one of my concerns and you've heard me talk about this for a while is that possibility that here we are kind of hovering out here between the 50 and the 200 day moving average. And um, this has created this little bit of a um, higher low situation here in the SPY. But typically markets don't like to float in mid air. And with um, some selling coming in, there is the outside possibility. I hate to be the guy that to, to brings this to you, but there is the outside possibility that we not only test this low, but we actually move on down and finally touch that 200 day moving average or, or around in that area. Kind of like over here where we went through that 200 day moving average. I know no one wants to hear that and uh, no one wants to see that occur, but honestly, we might get back to some better trading if we just get it over with, you know, rip that bandaid off and get it over with. And um, then we can kind of clean things up and start, start moving. Uh, with a little more deliberate uh, price action, but we're, we're holding in this area and it's a little bit, there's a little bit of concern. And as we push down this morning, if those sellers really get on and, and push hard on this, that does seem like a possibility. And at a bare minimum, testing these lows down here seems relatively likely at this point. If the bulls do catch a hold and, and start uh, picking it up, if they find something in earnings or, or news to um, inspire them, we still have to remember that we have significant price resistance up here that we have to deal with before we can break on through back to the upside. Let's take a look at the cues. Now the cues, similar situation where we have those high higher lows in here, nice little um, uptrend in here, but that bearish candle right here, not exactly a dark, uh, a bearish engulfing like the other two indexes, uh, more of a dark cloud cover and uh, the possibility that we could push lower, look for maybe a test down in here. And if that were to fail, if we lose that support, then watch that 200 day moving average could come into view pretty quickly and pull pretty hard on the market. Any rally back up, watch these resistance levels in the chart. They're pretty clearly defined in price and moving averages. We have significant levels of resistance right through this area right here that we're going to have to get through. We need some clarity. I think we need some kind of, of news event to really move us through there. And anything is possible. So we're, we're going to have to remain pretty flexible in the market. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM yesterday, whoops, can't type. IWM yesterday really created some technical damage here. Um, terrible technical damage. Um, at the close, selling into the close yesterday and breaking down through this level of price support. And this morning, um, we have that possibility now that we could be gapping just slightly lower here in IWM following through. So technical damage in IWM is pretty darn extreme. And this stock was already, or this index was already in a long-term decline. And that decline has uh, steepened here. So a pretty serious situation. And there is a big open space down here um, if we continue to fall in this area. So watch that closely. IWM not looking too healthy at the moment. Um, of course, we could always just bounce right back. We could catch something in the market, bounce right back up here and hold. But as long as we stay down below this area, we're going to have to be a little bit careful. Let's take a look at the VIX. That doggone VIX um, bouncing around yesterday. Um, Look like um, in the morning we were going to dump off some of that fear with that gap up open, but then we ended up with that pop and drop pattern. That's where we gap up and find selling the rest of the day, pushing us back down. Um, so we still run this risk where we're um, holding price support in here. And if that fear creeps in, we could easily start seeing... Um, this begin to spike up. So watch that closely. Holding onto that support is not what we want to see. Um, I wouldn't be too terrible worried unless we start breaking above here and then things could get really ugly really fast. So watch the VIX closely. It is entirely possible we find something in the news and the market to inspire the bulls 
and we continue to um, build out this little downtrend right here. But until we see something that provides us a little bit of clarity, that seems a little bit difficult for me to see where that's going to come from. Let's take a look at T2122. It's that four week new high, new low ratio. One of the things that is a little bit helpful to us is the fact that we're already down here um, relatively close to this uh, bullish reversal zone. So even though this is showing us we still have more downside potential that could be created in the market here, we're down here where we wouldn't expect a precipitous fall uh, to occur unless we just get something major um, in the market. But we're down here where we could catch that support after a, a, a bit of a pullback and then maybe catch that bounce. So kind of keep an eye on that. T2122 isn't really telling us much of anything other than we have room to move down. And of course, we certainly have room to move up. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar today. And unfortunately, we don't have much to say on our economic calendar today. We have the petroleum status report, which certainly can move the market around a little bit. But right now, the pressures of the market and everything that's putting pressure on the market was, is really going to trump this um, in a pretty big way. So if we happen to get a surprise build or a surprise decline, that will certainly affect those oil stocks, but may not have a major effect on the overall market today. And then keep in mind, we do have a Fed speaker later on today, but I wouldn't expect anything else in here to really move the market around at all. Um, keep in mind that we could go into more of a wait and see pattern today. And the reason uh, that could be the case is because we have that big GDP number and international trading goods coming out tomorrow along with those jobless claims. So we have a big day on the calendar tomorrow, but as of today, not much for the market to uh, feed on um, on that economic calendar. So unfortunately, that's where we stand. Now we do have quite a few earnings reports uh, today that the market could find some inspiration in some of those earnings reports this morning. For example, Box is reporting uh, today. I don't know, uh, it doesn't look like it is reported yet. Obviously this has been in an ugly decline, but that's reporting today, COTY reporting today. These aren't the kind of companies that would really be, you would expect to really move the market a ton. Um, we have Five Below, a retailer. Um, looks like um, that one will report today. Um, it can't, doesn't look like it is reported just yet, but Five Below obviously in a down downcline or decline a downtrend. If we look at GES, <coughs> GES also reports today another retailer um, obviously in a, uh, a pretty nasty decline. So all of these companies that are reporting, although, um, you know, it, every report makes a difference um, in the market, it would be unlikely these make major moves today, uh, really change the direction of the market. Looks like Tiffany's has reported this morning. Tiffany's bouncing up a little bit, but that certainly hasn't uh taken away the overall downtrend in Tiffany. So a lot of work that needs to be done in some of these stocks. And, and unfortunately, the, the kind of the stocks that are reporting today aren't likely to really move the market around a bunch. Let's take a look. <clears throat> well, before, before we take a look at some stocks that may be something of interest that you may want to keep an eye on, um, let's um, take a second here and if this is the first time you've seen these videos do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube click um, click on that bell icon as well when that pop-up comes up so that you can make sure and be notified when I post these videos I now have more than 600 videos on YouTube and every single market day I put out a morning market prep video barring any kind of electrical problem or uh, illness or something there's always a morning market prep video so if you find these useful please do me a favor as well click those thumbs up buttons and leave a comment you know the growth of this channel is 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 all 
you guys are making the growth of the channel. I do my very best job to put out good quality content without a whole bunch of hype, with a whole, without all kinds of prediction, just looking at the technicals of the chart. If you find that helpful, uh, please leave a brief comment. It, it doesn't have to be much of any comment. Even a thumbs up counts, and it helps the algorithm show these videos to more folks so that we can continue the growth of the channel. Thank you to everyone who does that. And also... Please remember, you're free to uh, share these videos with any friends and family. So share them on Facebook, share them on Twitter, whatever social media outlet you may use. So with that, let's take a look at some charts that could be setting up. Um, and I'm going to look at, um, well, kind of both sides of the market here and some concerns that um, could be showing up in in a lot of places take a look at um whoops huh that's not the chart i was looking at how about wwe wwe is setting up a what we call a pop out of the box pattern um, i've got a class on this pattern and what's important about this pattern is that we need to reverse from either a downtrend or an uptrend and we need to be showing the possibility of a trend uh, coming into play so as you can see here on wwe we've broken the downtrend we've rallied up and now we're trying to prove support if we can prove support and buyers step in somewhere along this area we have an opportunity for a low risk entry into a trade. And I say low risk entry because you, as you can see, there are no buyers above this area. There are no sellers below this area. And because we have this little trend that could possibly be beginning, we were going to, we would favor this potential move to the upside. That put allows us to enter a trade and this pink line right here is my price alert. That price alert will notify me if the stock pops up through there and gives me an opportunity to place a trade with a stop loss relatively close. I don't have to take a lot of risk in this trade. So it's one of my favorite patterns, the pop out of the box pattern. And one uh, chart that I would be kind of keeping an eye on right now because of this really nice tight consolidation. Now, this pattern could also fall out of this box. And the reason I say that is because we don't have an established trend here yet. We don't know where that next buy might come in. So it is entirely possible that this fails and drops down through this level. And that would suggest the possibility of at least testing these lows and maybe even going lower in that market. So watch that close. This could go either direction in that chart and particularly with the market being the way it is, anything is possible. And um, the pop out of the box can give you a low risk entry, both sides of that trade. Take a look at TTWO, TTWO holding up quite well here. It's been in this, this beautiful trend and continuing to hold up very, very well here, even though we had some selling yesterday, just kind of camped out here around my alert. Um, any kind of rest or consolidation that moves us over toward this trend just really increases that opportunity um, uh, for a trade setup in here. So keep an eye on TTWO. How about Home Depot? Home Depot, <clears throat> after breaking through resistance up here, just kind of camping out, trying to hold this area as support. Now, this was a pretty strong rally. So it's possible that this could pull back or consolidation for a period of time. But if we hold up in this range, hold in this area up here, I would be watching for that possible follow through to the upside. Now, of course, the market's going to have to pick up and get going if we need some inspiration in the market for that to occur. But... Um, Boy, I got to tell you, it's going to be a little bit hard right now to get a whole lot of inspiration. Um, but Home Depot is holding up quite well. <clears throat> because of that um, uncertainty in the market, stocks like Tyson, stocks that are defensive sector stocks, have been holding up quite well. Now, you can see T Tyson had a substantial pullback yesterday, leaving a bearish engulfing candle. So it's possible this trend is over for the for a period of time. But let's keep an eye on this 
these defensive sector stocks have been holding up quite well, even as this market has been just really, really crummy to trade and difficult to trade. Another place you might want to look is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola breaking out, making uh, new highs um, yesterday, holding up pretty well, even though the market did sell off and it looks like Coke could be opening about where it closed today. So still holding up considering uh, the, the little bit of bearishness that we're seeing in the market right now. Um, how about stocks like um, oh, ABT? Now, ABT is one of those that could be setting up for a failure. We have this downtrend, and all of these failures up here along the downtrend line set up that possibility for more selling. And you can see yesterday we put in a pattern up here. We've been rallying back. This is really nothing more than a bear flag. And that flag, as this uh, continues to progress, if we find some failure pattern occurring in here, if this were to give us a failure pattern, uh, then we would watch this for that next potential leg down and a lower low in the market. So that's something you want to watch for. And there's quite a few of those stocks setting up in that way. I mean, a lot of stocks setting up in that way. So you might want to keep an eye on it. Another one might be Lulu. Lulu is one of those patterns where we're failing along the downtrend. Uh, this is a very bearish pattern. And any follow through to the downside would suggest either a test of this low or possibly even breaking to a new low. So watch that closely. Lulu is one that is not looking so good. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. I want to wish you fantastic success in your trading. I know this has been a challenging market, and it's okay if you'd rather just stand aside and protect your capital during a market like this. I'd love to show you how we're, how we're navigating this um, in, in right way options. We're actually doing quite well right now with our positions, but if you're struggling don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your trading. We can, um, we can over a period of time improve our trading if we just keep at it and don't give up. So if there's something we can do to help you, please let us know. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome day. I wish you all the best. We'll see you bright and early Thursday morning. Have a good one.